So hi, Woman Grinds Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Ashley from Fox Call. We're asking some questions today about the upcoming EP, The Indigo Fault. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response the announcement so far? Uh, it has kind of been overwhelming, to be completely honest with you. Um, being a band for you know, only seven months at this point, uh, the feedback slash support we have gotten so far has been tremendous. So, yeah. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of talk about you guys on Twitter, which is why when we followed you and you followed back within 13 seconds, I was in your DMs 15 <laughs> seconds after yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I I have like all my notifications on for everything on like on the band Twitter, and I kind of like I don't work a lot during my day job just because the industry that I'm in, mm -hmm. and so I have the opportunity to like actually interact with people like as they interact with us. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. Yeah, I was like, hell yeah! I mean, the the EP fucking rocks. Fantastic! I get the hype. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's well worth the hype for sure. Oh yeah. yeah, we're excited because like in my opinion, the best song that we have on the EP has not been released and won't be released as a single. So all right, well, this is coming out. Honest around the time of the ep so w which one do you think is the best cliff jumper yeah 100 yeah, that's fair, that's <laughs> yeah. fair. Yeah. i understand that. that's fair that's fair that's like fair. The, en the ending of cliffs are interrupting the ending no, of no, cliff please. jumper is like one of the fav my favorite things that i've ever written on guitar mm -hmm. so it's like it's very dear to me oh yeah oh yeah that's awesome uh, so is there any meaning behind the ep title or cover art uh, so yeah, um, I have, so it's, it's kind of twofold. Mm. Uh, so I wrote 95% of the music with our drummer, Mia and Haven did all the vocals and I have something called, uh, I can never say the name, right. Uh, synthesia. Um, oh, so synesthesia. Yes. I always mix it up, but yeah, yeah. so when I'm writing music, all of it is in color. So if you even look at all of our current like single artwork and our old album, like our old single artwork, it's all very color based and color coded. Mm -hmm. So when I'm writing these songs, there there is color. That's all I see. Yeah. Um, and so the album art is actually a combination of every one of the songs and the color associated with them. Mm -hmm. And it used to be have a different name but we decided on the indigo fault when we were going through kind of the lyrical concepts that haven put behind the uh all the songs and decided that kind of pointing out that it's all about a journey leading somewhere and we're letting people kind of put their own meaning behind that mm -hmm. um and that the indigo fault is kind of like the precipice of that mm -hmm. okay heard got it Oh, yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for the EP? Oh, yeah. So my writing process, uh, everyone hates it. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, and it's because I will go and I will either rewrite things 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times, uh, and I'll be writing until the very end when we're still tracking the, the parts, um, or I'll sit down and I'll be able to write everything for a song in one fell swoop. So like Glacier, for example, was the first song that we wrote for the EP. And it was actually written like two years ago, two and a half years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. And everything else has been written within, you know, this, this year. Um, we all started with the, I started with the instrumentals with Mia, our drummer. Um, and we spent, oh God, three, four weeks hold up in my bedroom, writing these parts. And uh, Haven lives in Toronto. So our writing process is us writing it, sending these things to Haven for her to like demo over and kind of get vocal ideas going. Uh, but a lot of times we have the instrumentals themselves completely done uh, by the time they get to Haven. So Haven has like a full idea of what to do. Hmm. Makes sense. Uh, so what song off this EP took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? Ooh. So Symmetry took the longest to write because we couldn't stop fighting over it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. What happened? <laughs> so when I originally pitched the idea of, of Symmetry to the band, it was supposed to be this like eight minute epic, um, kind of similar to a band called Voices from the Fuselage. Uh, they're one of my favorite like 
kind of operatic bands. Mm -hmm. And that song itself takes you through this journey. Mm -hmm. And our old bass player kind of took that idea and went a completely different direction and was very, I guess, hung up on how she had written the structure and didn't want it to change at all, which made it very difficult because Haven and I had um, a completely different like thing we wanted to do with this. Mm. And so like, no joke, that song, we did not finish writing it until like the day before we had to send it to get mixed no. uh, on our deadline. And it was like almost two months after the rest of the EP was written. Cause we kept cutting and kept changing things and kept trying to like get it to the spot where we were super happy with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it worked, it it turned out well, um, but it took a long time for us to get there. Yeah. Um, and then for my favorite song, uh, I'd have to say cliff jumper. I was going to, I was going to say, like, I figured, I figured you answered that earlier in the interview. Um, yeah, cliff, cliff jumper is, I think thematically the strongest song and even musically the strongest song on the EP. Mm -hmm. Because it really hones into the style of music that I really, really love playing. Mm -hmm. And we span a few genres on this EP, but like that post-hardcore, post-rock, like Circus Survive style of music yeah. is what I grew up with. Yeah. So um, it, yeah, that that's definitely my favorite song. Hell yeah. Um, so for this question, we want you to pick your favorite lyric off the EP and tell us the meaning behind it. Ooh, okay, so it's going to be from Glacier. Um, it might be a little biased, uh, but it's the first verse. Um, honestly, kind of the whole first verse where it's like, uh, this feels like a disease slipping through the cracks in my skin. Um, so I was, it, and there's a long context to it, which is why I love it so much is, so I was in two bands prior to this pre-transition um, that I ended up leaving because I couldn't see myself like continuing in that band if I wasn't able to transition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in 2013 to 2015, the music scene was not that great for queer people slash trans yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so when we started Fox Colt, obviously I'm well into my transition now, like years into it. So writing Glacier and getting to the lyrical content of it is, it's about like, letting those pieces like slip through. So like, I still had this fear that like being trans in the music industry was going to be like this incredibly difficult thing to deal with. And it's really not anymore. Um, and kind of how transness and queerness is taught to us when we're younger to be a disease and it's not. Um, so it's about my struggle and acceptance of being queer, being trans uh, and kind of what it was like traveling through that journey. Yeah. And it, it's awesome to hear you say that, like, it's not hard for you now because it really does show the improvement that the music industry has had the past 10 years. You know, it's oh, still it's got a long ways day. to go, but it is like night and day from 10 years ago. For sure. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, honestly. That's awesome. I'm so fucking happy to hear that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's fucking awesome. So would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this EP? Yeah, it's a lot of stress. Um, but for for us, it was really about, I guess, a direct, not a directive, but a direction on what we wanted to get across with this EP. Because being an all-trans band, um, you don't see that if ever, like there are bands with trans people in them mm -hmm. uh, and queer people, but at least I don't know of any bands that are all trans, mm -hmm. uh, especially in this genre of music. Mm -hmm. And so we, we set out uh, with the understanding and kind of that, that headspace that what we do and everything we do in this is incredibly important because we are one representing, whether we wanted to or not representing an entire demographic of people Mm -hmm. um, who don't get represented very often in a, in a good light. And, um, we wanted to be able to make it the best we possibly could. So we had to stay super positive, even with all of like, 
fighting we would do, like never bad fighting, but like just the typical like bickering back and forth about this and that. Yeah. Um, but honestly, the headspace was really, really good. We were able to um, meet up in Toronto uh, and do a bit of writing, you know, while we were tracking everything for the EP. Mm-hmm. And that really helped a lot. That helped form the lyrical content a lot. Um, Cause it was the first time we had ever all met. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting. Um, I'm excited to write our full length um, mm-hmm. because we're going to be in a even better headspace. Yeah. So. Hell yeah. So I don't want to get too in deep into the origin story. Cause I'm sure you got, you've done plenty of interviews where it's been asked and plenty of interviews further down the line that it will be asked but yeah. um you did mention that you know meeting up in toronto was the first time that you guys had met up so yeah. this this was like formed online How, did you guys know each other for like years ahead of time to- like beforehand or get into nope. it just, a, just so, a little bit like i'm not asking point blank but as much no, as you okay. want to tell <laughs> <laughs> so we have um I, the band was actually started with me and our old guitar player um who's no longer in the band mm-hmm. And, um, we had known each other for a few months and we both realized we had uh, similar interests, similar tastes in music and stuff like that. Um, and we actually formed an earlier version of Fox Colt in Boston, uh, where we both lived at the time with completely different members. And that lasted three, maybe four practices. And I quickly realized that like, that wasn't the right group of people, um, Fast forward, I ended up moving to Seattle uh, and we kept in touch and uh, our old guitarist found Haven on Twitter, uh, put a random feeler out and was like, hey, do I have any singers, blah, blah, blah. And Haven responded and we were just completely blown away, like right away. Mm -hmm. And me and Haven hit it off amazingly well. And so I put a feeler out because I was like, okay, well, if we found a singer, that's like the hardest step. Yeah. Um, finding a trans singer is like incredibly difficult. Uh, so I was like, okay, we have a real chance to like actually do something here. Mm-hmm. So I put out a feeler for drummers on Twitter. And my friend in New Jersey was like, hey, I know this drummer in Seattle. And I was like, well, that's weird because I live here. Why do I not know them? <laughs> uh, and ended up being Mia, who lives like 20 minutes away from me. So like, uh, Mia and I obviously had hung out prior to Toronto, but it was really our first time like being all together with Haven. Um, and yeah, so Twitter did something good. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. Well, it was like, good for a lot of things for a while there and it's yeah. went down the shitter in the past six months. Yeah. It really has. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, so then, you know, with one member being in Toronto, you guys being in Seattle together, was there any sort of like struggle with the writing process, you know, being in, in different States? Um, I think, I think probably the hardest thing for us is not having that immediate gratification. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why when we, when we do a full length, it's going to be, will probably sound not a lot different, but like there will be differences because it will be us writing with each other the whole time. And so like vocals will influence guitar parts, guitar parts will influence other things. Um, And, you know, for this first EP, it was a lot of me writing a, you know, a bass song with some shitty drums that I decided would sound cool. And Mia coming and be like, hey, what if a real drummer wrote these? And fixing (laughs) them and making them good and everything like that. And then, you know, Haven would get an end product and so it was, it was definitely very interesting. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do it again, mm-hmm. but I, uh, I think it had a good impact and kind of like us each putting our own little stamp on what we sound like. Makes sense. And you keep mentioning the LP. Is it still just like talks and you guys are going to work on it together when, when every, everyone's together or has work started on it? Uh, so work has started on it. Oh, yeah. Um, when it's coming out is anybody's guess only because, you know, as I'm sure you can tell on Twitter, we haven't even played a show yet. True. Um, our first show is actually in 31 days and Ooh. we have some really fun ideas and plans for next year, uh, which involve other States in the country. Um, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. 
that'll obviously push any chance of an LP being like actually concentrated on back at least a year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say we won't even start talking about like the, the LP in seriousness probably till summer when we finally have a chance to like slow down, start writing for real and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, Gotcha. Um, so, but it is on their minds. All right. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. to hear. Um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to CP for the first time? Should I do in the car with friends and the dark with headphones on? Is the workout EP party EP? What do you personally recommend? Um, this is tough actually. So a lot of our friends like to say that like our music is really good to float to. Like they'll post that like SpongeBob meme of him like floating in the kitchen. Oh, mm-hmm. um, because like our choruses have that effect where it kind of feels like you go weightless for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, what I and then obviously on the flip side of that, we have those people who say that like songs like Silicone Dream are that perfect like get in the car and drive song. Mm-hmm. So honestly, for me, I would say the first time you listen to it, you know you you're either in a car with your friends um, on a road trip or you are laying in bed, lights off, just absorbing everything. Um, Cause there's so many tiny, tiny elements in our EP uh, that a lot of people are probably going to miss the first three, four, five times around, mm-hmm. especially in symmetry um, that really require that like actual intentional listening. All right. Gotcha. Oh yeah. All right. So this one should be super, super quick off the top of your head. I want you to describe this EP for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Genuine. Okay. Angry. Okay. And ethereal. Oh, that's good. I like that last one. All I right. fucking love that last one. Yeah. Um, Cause all of our lyrics are very, very like somber and angry. So mm-hmm. it's, I think it's a good juxtaposition. Absolutely. Sure. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the EP? Uh, yeah, kind of like your, we, what we want people to feel as you're going through it is the beginning of the EP is you starting this journey of, of acceptance of whatever it is. And each song is actually a different stage of that journey. Um, so you go from like acceptance to grief to like bitterness and resentment to starting the cycle again and kind of repeating that um it's it's intended to be cyclical um so like you can listen to it back to back and the songs like symmetry fades into empty space so um we honestly want people to feel exhausted at the end like they got something off of their chest Uh, and they feel like they can you know rest yeah that's kind of cool. Yeah. That's really fucking cool. Yeah, I love that. We've n- I don't think we've we've ever gotten that answer before where it's like exhaustion of almost relief of just getting something off your chest after listening to it. Yeah, yeah if you if if you notice a lot of our songs once we start we don't stop. Mm-hmm. Um while we have, you know, songs like empty space that are slower, mm-hmm. um a lot of times you are just kind of the music is relentless. Mm-hmm. Um now how we provide that music might change whether it's slower but it is almost constant constant Mm -hmm. vocals constant everything um and so it's just like a a roller coaster up and then symmetry hits you and it's that drop yeah so oh yeah fuck yeah fuck yeah so are you able to touch on any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this ep positive or negative oh yeah (laughs) it's been (laughs) Uh, it's, uh, I'll include the music videos because it, let me tell you, it has been a journey. Oh, okay. Um, so we, I guess on the, I'll start with the, the bad side of things. Um, uh, we have two ex members who are no longer in the band and it's for the better. Um, but they created a lot of resentment almost, uh, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. uh, amongst everybody, just because of inability to work with each other, um, their actions in and outside of the band. Um, but then on the positive side, you know, we've had moments like the, uh, when we were filming the music videos where me, Haven and Mia are just, even though we have not known each other long, 
you, it feels like we have known each other for years. And you really get that sense when you listen to the songs too, that like these sound like songs that were written by people who have been friends for years. Yeah. Um, and so getting that, you know, gratification and satisfaction from knowing that we've created something that is being latched onto as much as it is, is probably the most like rewarding thing out of all of this. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Hot dogs, which is the worst choice, but sheets sheets and like wawa live rent free in my head mm -hmm. um we don't approve also, of this <laughs> <laughs> gas station hot dogs okay we're look, doing that well look so back in 2015 mm -hmm. when i was touring a lot uh i was in like a mid-level band we weren't making a ton of money uh, so like gas station hot dogs and like the hamburgers and stuff that you could get at like sheets and, um, other, you know, gas stations that have like somewhat food courts in them, mm -hmm. uh, that, that is all we had. Yeah. So it's not even like, it's a, it's a prideful thing. Cause like, I admit that it is something I should not be eating. Um, have you, but, have you tried the hot burger? Hot burger. Yeah. I was what is that? Hot dog burger. It's a, it's like, like hamburger meat stuffed inside a sausage casing no what not good <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'm, glad, I'm glad i haven't tried it then yeah <laughs> it's, it is um challenging yeah uh, i can well, imagine the the guys in chelsea grin they they ride for it but that's the only band that has said they enjoy hot burgers Mm -hmm. Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna have I'll have everyone try it when we find a restaurant, uh, a gas station that has one, mm -hmm. and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Ugh. Please tag us. burgers. <laughs> 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 so, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? Ooh, that is actually that might be the best question I think I've ever been asked. Thank, Thank you. Um, probably shepherd's pie. Oh, okay. Um, because every one of us has like something uniquely different about us that you wouldn't really put normally in the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then once we're all, because like our music tastes are completely different, the our influences are completely different. Um, but when you put us all together, we're a delicious little, you know, amalgamation of disaster. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, That's great. Fuck yeah. Um, and for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Hot take, but also shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> or enchiladas. I Ooh. love enchiladas. Love enchiladas. Um, my drink of choice would probably be a peach nectarine Red Bull. Oh, nice. you're going to be fucking buzzed for that. I'll, I'll be going. I'll be ready. Ooh. Oh, my God. OK, <laughs> I've only liked the um the watermelon flavored Red Bull. I've tried like the regular and it tastes like the regular is not good. Yeah, no, it's not good. I was like, how do people fucking drink this? Because Tate a lot of people fucking ride or die for Red Bull. And I'm like, this this shit's awful. But the watermelon's good. Yeah. Try the peach nectarine one. It's it's it doesn't even taste like Red Bull. Oh, which is dangerous because I drink like one a day. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll keep that in mind, but that does sound fucking delicious though. Yeah. So I, I'll look for it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? Pan Am from the Hunger Games. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I feel like, because like my two answers were either going to be Pan Am or like I play a game called Destiny 2. Oh. And like that world, even though it's like our world, I just feel like having those powers would be incredible. But then Pan Am on like the same side of things, like while the Hunger Games is like obviously not a great thing. Um, I just would love to see how the world operates. I don't know. It's just such a weird dystopian like future yeah that i would just be so curious 
Well, you'll have a week to <laughs> check it out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I've thought of asking the last question. Every single person that we've spoken to have said that is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Ooh, teal. Ooh, good ass color. Good. Yep. So my custom guitar is in teal. My face tattoos are all teal. So Hell yeah. big fan. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big fan. Um, so as I said, that's all the questions you have to say. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Uh, just our EP, The Indigo Fall, that is out on November 17th. Um, our amazing record label, Adventure Cat Records. Um, they are the people who give us the power to do what we do. Um, and then Big Picture Media. So they are our pseudo representation when it comes to things like PR and everything like that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really it right now. I can't really talk about anything else. So. Oh yeah. All right. Well, thank Long you. Time, it's been uh, Ashley from Fox Cult and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.